remote is harder. I don't want to sell snake oil here. It, it is harder, but why do we do it? We do it because we all want the best talent for the position, right? An audit, if done right, can be done incredibly well. And what that means is I do work. I complete work product. I hand it to you. You're working on other things. When you drop in to that work, you add your piece and you add your comments and it goes to person number three, then probably back to the leader for review. Running a hybrid team is challenging, yet if work is structured correctly, it frees your team to be more productive than they are today, and it is there for you. Jeff Phillips, we're in the Accounting Talent Podcast. Can firms be productive if none of them are in the office? Can we manage people in a hybrid working environment so that things actually work? You've got the answers. How do you reply? We are in a hybrid work world now. We all learned that during the pandemic, didn't we? With work from home, hire remote staff. Not only can you be more productive than you were before, you can build a great culture. You can train your staff. You just have to make some key moves to have a great performing team. And that's what we're talking about today. Uh, can a firm be productive with remote staff? We hear a lot of calls back to the office. Is that because they want to control you? They want to keep an eye on you? They don't trust you with what you're doing? Or they want to justify very high commercial rates on real estate and everything else with the offices, the hiring, what's going on. But what's the problem we're solving here, Jeff? Problem we're solving is in the last three or four years, the, there have been a vast increase of the hiring of remote staff, offshore staff, freelance staff, or if you're not even there yet, we're letting staff work from home. And we all had to do that here in the United States in 2020. And people are frustrated. How do I know if my team is performing if I can't see them? How do I build culture if I have remote staff or work from home staff? How do we optimize our practice and become incredibly efficient and productive if we're not together in a room? I can hear the alarm bells ringing with a lot of leaders asking themselves, how can I, how can I optimize my staff to be productive if I can't have them in the same room with me? How can I teach them, mentor them? give them orders and check on their work product. So let, let's just ask a simple question. Are firms less productive when they have remote employees, Jeff? Do we have any facts on that? We actually have facts that suggest companies that embrace remote work are more productive. More productive. The jury's in on that one, isn't it? The jury's in on that one, but that doesn't mean that the owner of an accounting firm listening to this has reached that point. Okay. Because there is change that has to take place, but the opportunity is great. What can leaders do about it then? What, what's the headline here? So I want the headline to be, so I, I, I don't want the headline to be, what technology do I need to buy to make this work? I want the headline to be, what is my mindset as, as a leader and culturally to be, to make hybrid work more productive than we were before. And the mindset is to shift from, I can't see you, so you must not be productive and I can't trust you, to I will trust you because I hired you and I will create a system that ensures work is getting accomplished and to build a team culture. So it's, it's, it's a shift of where we are starting to set up work. And that takes a system to know how things are getting done, what is the pace and when things are getting done? You know, pe people are now part of an office team. That's it. Well, people are, uh, people are parts of team, Rob, that are part office and part remote. And we call that hybrid work environment. That is my exact situation. I'm the CEO of a large company and I, and I work remotely with most of the staff working in an office in another city. And our philosophy is we are more productive because we are remote if we set up work correctly. And I'm happy to give some examples of how to move into that. I did an interview a while back uh, during the pandemic with the CEO of Sage UK at that time. And he said, I've been here a year and I have not met 99% of the employees at this company. This is the CEO. Now, granted, we were all socially isolated and everything shut down. But yeah, we have to do that dynamic. But yeah, we do have that dynamic. Some are in, some are not in. Some people want to be in. And I've noticed actually, that even if I'm being a little bit cynical, that the people that do want in tend to be the better paid people, the partners with the great offices, the corner offices, the wonderful chairs, the, the private doors, their name on the door, the big cars, the small commutes, because 
the big houses closer to the office so they don't have to travel for an hour. So yeah, a, a little bit cynical, but some people, do you want to work remote? So what we're saying here is that we're more productive because we are remote, but if we set it work correctly, give us some examples of how this might play out, Jeff. I'm someone that prefers to work in an office. I, I, I like, I like the camaraderie. I'm a people person. I think I can get more done there. My company has a beautiful office in Georgia, but I live in Florida and I, I live in my hometown. I live a mile from my parents and a mile from my in-laws. And I wanted to raise my children so they, when we could be on the water where we live and so that my children could know their grandparents. And I knew I might be limiting career options because of that. But because I made a choice of, of working remotely, I had to figure this out, you know, but every anxiety a leader has about this is true. It, remote is, is harder. There, there, there's no, there's no, uh, that, that, you know, I don't, I don't want to, to sell snake oil here. It, it is harder, but why do we do it? We do it because I've mentioned this Washington Post article, and maybe we put this in the show notes, but we all want the best talent for the position, right? And we want to build culture. We want to have thriving companies. Our workforce prefers flexible work arrangements. They want to work from home. That doesn't mean they want to not be productive. But there was a massive shift that people should understand what happened generationally. My mom and dad, dad, dad worked and mom ran the home and raised the kids. That was a generational norm for baby boomers. For I'm a Gen Xer, but for most Gen Xers and, and most millennials, mom and dad work and mom and dad take care of kids. And so there is shared responsibility financially and there's shared responsibility at home. So this shift is undeniable, right? So, so as leaders of businesses, we can stick our heads in the sand and ignore it, or we can look to the trends and say, how do I embrace this? And so it's, it is my opinion, you know, giving that background that what we've learned from making remote work productive actually makes work more productive, no matter how you work. And it's, and it's by creating more structure inside remote work and better communication and better, better even better teamwork, yet allowing vast amounts of focus time to get work done. And guess what profession needs vast amounts of focus time to get work done? The accounting profession. <laughs> the, the accounting profession, yeah. It's One of the complaints w with the whole working from home from the people that have to work from home is there's a bleeding of personal into work and working the personal, and I can't do office hours anymore. Now, that can be a good and a bad thing, can't it? It is what it is. If mom and dad are working and a child gets sick, it's not it, – no longer is it mom – that is at home to go get the sick child. My wife runs a company. I run a company. We're busy. We're a busy mom and dad with three kids. <laughs> we have a structure. This week is my week. If, if I have a sick kid, it's my week to go home. Am I going to take the day off? No. I'm, gonna, I'm going to give medicine. I'm going to provide care. And I'm going to open my laptop. Because I'm, everything has been set up for me to pick right back up if I had to leave the office that I rent out of town from, from my company, which is led by a remote team. Hmm. One of the big shifts that the pandemic taught us was the difference between synchronous and asynchronous communication. Just give us a, a bit of insight into that. So, so this is one of the ways where we can achieve greater productivity because everyone has a to-do list. Everyone's working on projects. We are all working in teams. Synchronous communication means you and I must be together to collaborate. Yeah. Same place, same time. You and I are having a synchronous conversation. An audit is an example of an asynchronous project that if done right, can be done incredibly well. And what that means is basically I do work. I complete work product. I hand it to you. You're working on other things. When you drop in to that work, you add your piece and you add your comments 
and it goes to person number three, then probably back to the leader for review. And so if we structure this right, there's a, there is an amazing teamwork that can happen where I can work on multiple projects at a time and you can work on multiple projects at a time. And if we do a good job of holding ourselves accountable and keeping a good pace, we can actually accomplish more because we're not sitting in meetings all day and, and collaborating in person. We have focused, intentional time to complete work product. And it takes project management software and it takes communication software to do these things. But, but what we found is if you structure this right and, and you have clean checklists and you organize in a spreadsheet or a shared spreadsheet or Google Doc or a piece of project management software, I can get my done in focused work. I hand it to you when you're ready to drop into it. And that is asynchronous communication. Counting works that way. Tax works that way. Audit works that way. CAS works that way. Until the point where we're communicating with a client, which can be done over Zoom, by the way, it can also be done asynchronously. And I'll give you an example of client work when it's asynchronous. I complete a tax return for my client. Five years ago, I would have to set a meeting with the client. The client would have to commute 30 minutes to my office, sit in my office for an hour, commute 30 minutes back. I'm taking up an hour and then I'm getting ready for the next meeting. We have firms at Paget who complete a tax return for a business entity and they record a Loom video. It's a video of them presenting the tax return. You and I do these videos when we communicate with each other, Rob, because we live on two different continents. We're running this podcast together. So Loom video is a great way for the client to see the friendly face of the advisor, to get 90% of the information that they need to know. It takes 10 minutes for the person to record it. Now, there might be an asynchronous follow-up. If you have questions, Rob, just drop me an email and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Or if we need to have a meeting to discuss the last 10% of this, the last mile of the project, happy to get on a call. Here's my link to set that up. And you spoke of this beautifully in the last episode where we talked about the importance of technology in recruitment. There are some accounting specific technologies and there's work productivity specific technologies. There's the world of work technology that opens you up to remote collaboration and asynchronous projects. And there's, there's the world of accounting, tax, payroll technology that opens up the world of, of CAS, advisory, that can all be done remotely. And so, so in the world of work, we're talking about project management software. There are accounting specific project management software. There's Carbon, there's Tax Dome, there's Canopy. And all of these tools are, 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 are project management sort of centerpieces for an accounting firm to get work done virtually or inside an office. Then there are non-accounting specific tools. My personal favorite is called Trello. I run my life, my personal life, my two businesses I'm involved in, time with you on this podcast through Trello. I use it with my assistant. I use it with my wife. I use it with my teammates. And when I work on projects, I make notes. Those are handed over to the next person that collaborates. I don't have to set a meeting every single time I need to get something done with somebody else. Right? So these are some examples of world of work technology tools. You've got communication tools like Slack. It connects an entire team on across continents to get asynchronous work done. We use video chat. And I think, I think the pandemic brought the entire accounting profession into Zoom or Teams. But in all these documents and in all of these apps, we can talk, we can asynchronously communicate, we can share documents, we can comment on files, we can comment on spreadsheets. And so if you structure this well, you can fly through work remotely. By the way, if you work in an office, you should be using these tools because they allow for faster work product to get done. And we're just talking about asynchronous. And I want to talk about, there are times when we need to meet with people too, but, but, but even that can be better because we have hybrid work environments. You're talking less about the products because there's so many products out there that can do the same thing. It's more about philosophy, right? And as you said, a mindset and approach that needs to be embraced by the whole firm. Don't even look at the technology until you've defined your philosophy about how are we going to communicate, right? You've got to consider things like context. What is the work we're trying to get? Is it a tax return? Is it getting financial? monthly financials completed. And so you've got to think about the context of what we're doing. We need to think about how we assign status to work 
whose hand is it in? Uh, who has a hand in it? Is it something that you need to do? Is it something that you're waiting for? Is it something that needs to go to somebody else? Every, every task needs a directly responsible individual who owns the task. That needs to be clear. And what should the timeline be? What should the deadline be? And so every project that I set up in Trello, which is what I use for my own personal organization and for my businesses, no work starts until those things are, are worked out. And so you don't just buy Carbon, which is an accounting practice management software, and just get into it. You want to think deeply about what are our goals, who are, is on the team, and, and how do we how does work flow throughout our company? You can tell too, can't you, if people are hitting deadlines, if they're getting the work done, if they're productive or not. You can tell that pretty quickly if they're remote. If you're using a project management software, I don't care if you're a hybrid team or an office team. I have an owner at Paget who, could, who, who tells me that he can tell you within, within 30 days if a new hire is going to make it or not because he runs his firm using a, an accounting specific practice management software. And his role is kind of, He's the, he's, he's the, uh, he's, he's beating the drum and everybody else is marching to his beat. And so he can look in there and see pace and frequency and work completion and who has a backlog that's not getting completed and what deadlines are late. So, so what's so funny is like, we get so scared about remote work, but really we're just improving how we work. It just happens to have happened because people were working from home together. And we're addressing the leaders here to say, get your housing order. If you're struggling with remote work then, and, and having people that are working remotely, there, there's ways around this. But we're also talking to the employees there that have a, a manager that's wanting them to come into the office or not handling the remote situation well. They've got choices to stay and change things or move on, haven't they? But they will move on. We know that people will leave firms that, that have not embraced remote work, hybrid work, or advanced world of work technology. What kind of obstacles come up or objections in this, Jeff? Maybe, maybe it's efficiency, maybe it's productivity, maybe it's monitoring, I'm not sure, but what comes up in your conversations? Most, the most frequent thing I hear is, is, I can't trust someone that's working from home. Right. I don't know that they're working. Well, I just gave you the answer to that. I think your philosophy of management if it's I, if I see you, I can trust you, seems very impractical. What we care about is work product and work product getting done. And so if we're organized around pieces of work, deadlines, and who owns it, which is just, you, you could just start a spreadsheet to do this, but I would encourage you to use project management software just by shifting the management into that mode and with a mindset of, I'm going to trust you because I made the decision to hire you and you're going to work inside my system. And maybe you can help improve my system. I'm hearing screams of culture here, Jeff. It's so hard to imbue your culture into remote workers because they're not walking the corridors. They're not having a cup of coffee with you in the, the work kitchen. They're not across from you with their cubicle. They're not bumping into you every day and, and having those conversations or going for lunch. And that's when a lot of the, the intangible culture is transferred. It, it's, it's a fair problem to raise. And what's changed is where work happens, not who we are as a company. I mean, culture is a written down or not written down set of behaviors and norms and rules of how we do work, how we communicate, how we connect as human beings inside the world of work. And so I'm describing things that can happen over Zoom I'm describing things that can happen in project management or asynchronous work. And so, yes, it's different, but it's, it, it, it's not impossible. And it, it's not even remotely impossible. It's, it's so doable. And it's, it's really kind of a lazy excuse to not embrace the fact that your future workforce is not going to live in the same city as you. One of my favorite things, Rob, about the, in culture is how we get work done. And uh, two things come to mind that I think might be helpful. And I'm going to borrow this from a, a brilliant 
communicator about and, and thinker about the world of work named Cal Newport. If you know Cal, he has a podcast called Deep Questions. He wrote A World Without Email, which is one of my favorite books. And it's all about being more productive. But yes, it does, it does happen to do with being more productive in remote work. And he talks about the concept of office hours. So what we lose when we are remote is impromptu and spontaneous conversations. And that's how you get to know people. That's how sometimes problems get solved. So the way my work week is scheduled and set up is that I do deep work from about 8 a.m. to about 1 p.m. every day. Between 1 and 1.30 every day, I am collaborating with other people in meetings. There are recurring corporate meetings I'm in. There are, there are sales team meetings that I sit in. And then there's about 15, 30 minute slots that are just open that I, that are my office hours and, and my team generally has the same office hours. And so they know this is the time to pick up the phone or, or get on teams and video chat, call me or send a, send a chat message to me. And this is my collaboration time. This is when we're working on projects together. This is when it is needed for synchronous communication. And so there's a structure there that so that I'm not in meetings all day. I have projects that I'm responsible for delivering, but I have office hours that allow all those questions to get asked. The second tool is what I, what I just call agendas. And this is borrowing from Getting Things Done by David Allen, if you read that book. 90% of the things that I need to talk to you about, maybe 99% of the things I need to talk to you about can wait. They are not the houses on fire level issues, right? So I have a Trello board called Agendas. There's Agenda for Roger at Paget. There's an Agenda for you, Rob. There's Agenda for my wife. There's Agenda for the different teams I'm in. And as I go through my week of work, I add items on that agenda so that when I speak to you, I have a list, right? So the option would be I send you an email or a text every single time a question pops into my head. Do you have anybody in your life that works like that? I do. And what I teach them is, is hey, I'm in my focus time right now. We have a one-on-one. -on -one. Save it for then. But if it's an emergency, pick up the phone and call me. But this allows me to coach other people how to batch work, right? And so there's a time for me to speak to my colleagues at Paget, and I have agenda items for every single one of them. As I go through my weekly planning, I think about questions I need to ask somebody. It doesn't need to be answered within 25 minutes. If there's an emergency, that's what the phone is for. That's what a text, when a text needs to be sent or called. So office hours, agendas, these are ways that we can create more culture and more collaboration. And I'll give you a third tip. Uh, at Accounting Fly, a recruiting company that, that I'm, I'm a co-founder of, we begin every meeting with personal check-ins. So we budget five to 10 minutes of the meeting to ask people how their weekend was. And it is intentional. I want to know how Beth at Accounting Fly's two daughters are doing. Because they're one's in college and one's about to start college and one, one's about to graduate from college. How are they doing? That gives us personal cultural time to check in and it, and it builds that culture. And this is, this is a person I've seen once in person in the last four years, but we know each other well. You asked me about my two daughters, Jeff, and where, where I am on your Trello board. So we'll sort that one out. But you answered the question really well. It can be done. And we're not talking about 100% remote sometimes. I know when you talk about onboarding and we've done great episodes on that, you said, look, you do need to shake hands with people. You do need to look in the whites of their eyes and bring them into the office and spend some time with them in person. I was in sales for 20 years. And that, that is something that's better in person, is, is, a, is, is that, 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 that periodic relationship in person over a meal or in an office. I think in hybrid teams, any new hire should be in the office for training. I think in hybrid teams, remote staff should be in the office or together for some, some quarterly planning or event once a quarter. And I think that's a, that's a must have for a hybrid team. Every hire that you make remotely probably has some sort of arrangement of time that they need to be spent traveling to your office so that they can get work done because some of that work done is better in person. You're right. That, that has, that's never going to go away. Let's wrap things up here, Jeff. The problem we've been addressing here is how to manage teams in a modern hybrid working environment. We've been asking the question, can an accounting firm be productive with remote staff? What's your answer? Running a hybrid team is challenging 
Yet if work is structured correctly, it frees your team to be more productive than they are today. And it is there for you. And if we allow the focus to be talking about and have a plan and a philosophy and a mindset that addresses how we work together, and this is just doable, it's vital, isn't it, for modern day accounting firms to be competitive in the talent market. Absolutely. And where I would start is, is shop for a project management tool and listen to Cal Newport's podcast, Deep Questions, where he sets this up, how to collaborate effectively, whether you're in an office or a hybrid or a fully remote environment, get the project management worked out and, and, and you, you will see massive progress and massive gains. Jeff Phillips, great episode. See you next time. Thank you all for joining us today.